Okay, Rams, um, this is your test review. It is extra credit, but if you bring it in completed, you will have 10 points added to your test. Um, but if you watch this and you're doing your, your video or answering the questions anyway, you're probably going to do better because you're going to know what to expect. Okay, so first question here. Mark is helping his mom make brownies. He needs five eighths of a cup of sugar to make one dozen brownies. How much sugar does he need to make 48 brownies? Well, remember one dozen is 12. So if I'm gonna make 48 brownies, I'm making four times as many. So four times as many brownies means I need four times as much sugar. So four times five eighths. Four times five is 20. Eight times one is eight. 28 so I use division 20 divided by 8 8 times 2 is 16 and I subtract and get a 4 but that 4 becomes my numerator and my denominator is 8 well that's not simplified 4 8 can be reduced if I divide them both by 2 4 divided by 2 is 2 8 divided by 2 is 4 so it's 2 and 2 fourths Wait, that's still not simplified. Two and two fourths can both still divide by two. Now I don't divide the whole number, just the fraction part. Two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. But I keep my whole number, two and a half. Okay, which has a product larger than six? So what this means, remember, we said six times one is six. So for my answer to get bigger, I have to multiply six by something bigger than six, or bigger than one. So if I multiply six by something smaller than one, my answer gets smaller. Okay, these are both fractions, so I don't see a mixed number anywhere, but this one's tricky. This is an improper fraction. Nine eighths is greater than one whole. Okay, 13 14 while those numbers look bigger, it's still less than one. So your answer is C, because this number is larger than one. Okay. Next, a candy jar contains 450 pieces of candy. Two fifths of the candy in the jar is jelly beans. How many jelly beans are in the jar? So really what I wanna know is what is two fifths of 450? Okay, well, Couple of things you can do, two fifths times 450 over one. Two times 450 is 900, five times one is five. So 900 divided by five. Hmm, okay, I could divide that. Five times one is five, and then I get a four and bring down my first zero. Five times eight is 40. I have a zero. Now I'm not done because I haven't used this last zero over here. If I bring that down and I have a zero here, five goes into zero, zero times. So it's 180. Okay? But another way to look at that is with our fraction bar here. We're going to divide it into fifths. Okay? One fifth, one fifth. Now what is one fifth of 450? So that's just saying 450 divided by 5. Well, 5 times 9 is 45, and then I have a 0, so 5 times 0. So 90. So each 1 fifth is 90. So 1 fifth of the jar is 90 pieces of candy. So 2 fifths would be 2 of those 90s, which is still 180. So you could choose which way you'd want to solve that, but they both get you the same answer. Okay. Oh, the next one has a small typo, sorry. What is the area of the square? Remember area, you learned in fifth grade, was length times width, remember? Well, I only know one of them. What is the other? Mm, it's a trick, it's a square, so that means they're both the same. Okay, so three and two fifths times three and two fifths. Five times three is 15, 16, 17 fifths times 17 fifths, okay? Well, I know that five times five is 25, but I do not know 17 times 17. So I'm gonna have to write it down. Oops, one, seven. 
Seven times seven is 49. Carry my four. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Then I'm gonna do one times seven and times one. So 289. Now that's improper, so I can't leave it that way, okay? So what I'm gonna do is divide 289 divided by 25. 25 goes into 28 one time, and I get a 25. A four, oh, that's, oh, oh, sorry, three, and nine. 25 times one is 25, and I subtract and get 14. But I can't leave it, so I don't just, I don't just put that remainder after the decimal. It's my mixed number. 11 and 14 25 feet squared. Next one, how do you write 14 thirds as a mixed number? Well, it's, it's an improper fraction. So I know to divide numerator divided by denominator. Three times four is 12 and I subtract and get a two. That two becomes my numerator and my denominator stays that number there. Four and two thirds. Okay. A bag of apples weighs three and one half pounds. Each apple weighs seven twelfths of a pound. How many apples are in the bag? So remember, I need the total amount to be shared divided by how I'm grouping it, my groups, okay? Now my total amount to be shared here is three and a half pounds of apples. And I'm sharing it, I'm splitting it up into equal parts that are each seven twelfths of a pound. Okay, so now I need to make them improper. So two times three is six, plus one is seven. Okay, be careful, I'm not noticing a lot of people make your denominator one. It's not the same as seven over one, it's seven halves. Okay, divided by seven twelfths. I haven't done any math yet, I haven't flipped anything. When I change it to multiplication is when I flip my second fraction only. So seven halves times 12 over seven. Okay, seven times 12 is 84, two times seven is 14. Okay, I know that seven goes into both of them. So I'm gonna divide by seven to simplify that for a second. 84 divided by seven is 12. And um, 14 divided by seven is two. What is 12 divided by two? Six. So it's six apples. Next question, we're gonna um, speed this up a little bit for you so your video is not too long, okay? Um, this is division, oh no, it's multiplication. Avery spends one and two thirds hour doing homework each day. In five days, how much time does he spend doing homework? So I know it's multiplication because I could add the same thing over and over here, okay? If I could add it five times. So one and two thirds, times five. I can have no whole numbers and no mixed numbers in my fractions. So three times one is three, plus two is five thirds times five over one. Okay, I'm gonna let you solve that so we can get through a little bit more here. Okay, Mr. Iglesias is cutting some lumber to build um, a patio. And each piece of wood is eight feet long. So let's say this is my board here and it's eight feet long. He wants to cut the wood so that each piece is two and five eighths feet long. Okay, that means I'm breaking it or cutting it into equal smaller parts. That tells me it's division. How many pieces? So it's saying, okay, two and five eighths. Two and five eighths. If I could do that over and over, how many of those would I have? That means it's division. So remember the first number is my total amount to be shared. The second number is how I'm grouping it, and each group is two and five eighths feet long. Okay, no whole numbers, no mixed numbers. So eight over one divided by, now eight times two is 16, plus five is 21 eighths. Now I do keep, change, flip, okay? Eight over one times eight over 21. Now it's a multiplication problem. You're gonna get 64 over 21, 
and you're going to have to divide. You cannot leave it, okay? So 64 divided by 21. 21 times 3 would be 63. And I have one left over, so it's 3 and 1 21st. Okay? Seventeen fourths as a decimal. Okay, we just do top dog. We do division here, just like we would to get it to a mixed number. Except we don't use our remainder as a fraction. We just add a decimal. So four times four is sixteen, and I subtract and get one. So I just add my decimal here, and I keep going. Four times two is eight, and I subtract and get a two. I can add a decimal and keep going. Four goes into twenty. Five times four times five is 20. So that's my answer. Okay? We're almost done. Show three ways to represent five divided by eight. Well, the most obvious is five divided by eight. Okay? We also talked about a fraction is the same as a division problem. So five over eight is the same thing. We read this as five divided by eight. Now, the one that most people have trouble with is that they get these numbers backwards. This is 5 divided by 8. Okay, your first number is your dividend. It's the total amount you have, and that goes in there. It doesn't matter if it's bigger or smaller. The first one, your dividend, goes inside that house, okay? All right, where do the numbers 6, negative 3, and negative 4 tenths go on this Venn diagram? Okay. Well, 6 is a whole number and an integer and a rational number, so it's going to go right smack in the center. Okay? Negative 3 is an integer and a rational number, but it's not a whole number because it's negative. So negative 3 would go here. This is negative 4 tenths. It's not one of those counting numbers we would see on a number line, so it's only a rational number. Some people are getting mixed up because they think that just because it's negative makes it an integer. That's not true. Last one. Okay, which ordered pair does not appear to be represented by one of these points? Okay, let's see. A, five halves. Ooh, five halves. That's improper, so let's see what that is. Five divided by two. Two times two is four, and I subtract and get one. That's one half. So two and a half, but it's a positive two and a half. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go over two and a half, one, two and a half, and down three. That looks like it's point A. Okay, B, negative one, negative one and a half. Uh-oh. So this says I go left one and down one and a half. So I should have a point right there. So B is not... Um, correct. There's not one there for B. There's not a point right here, so that looks like it's going to be wrong. Okay, my guess is it was this was the X and Y coordinates were backwards because this one goes over one and a half and down one. Okay, three halves, which is one and a half, two. So over one and a half, up two. So that's C. So this one is negative four, up one half, and that's D. So this answer is B. Okay. The only, uh, only one I didn't answer for you was the one up here with Avery, okay? Remember, your tests are open-ended. It's 11 questions this time, and it's not just multiplying and dividing fractions. It can be over anything since school started, okay? So if you complete this and get it turned in with your test on Wednesday, you will get 10 bonus points on your test, okay?